I'm going to be performing on the 11th with the Pacific Jazz Orchestra led by Chris Walden. Uh, Chris is doing all the arrangements and I'm very, very much looking forward to that. That's um, It's actually my first uh, solo orchestra or symphony gig. I'm so excited to be making my debut in this type of concert with the Pacific Jazz Orchestra. Yeah, I don't have a lot of live performance history in the Los Angeles area. Um, I've shot a bunch of things there for television and film, but I've not really, I mean, I, I toured through LA with a Hairspray National Tour, I think in 2004 five or 2006. I did do rent at the Hollywood Bowl in 2010. So I, I've done a, I've done a few things, but um, in comparison to other places, not as much. So I'm really excited to get back to LA um, with this side of the work that I do. <laughs> yeah, Chris Walden and I have been working closely kind of putting this set list together. And I had at first sent him a list of songs that I had just kind of been working through uh, dreams, thoughts, ideas for what this could look like. Um, and I, I had in mind the whole time uh, the orchestra, right? Because I think with these kind of these kind of concerts, or at least I I, I believe that you want to showcase um, the orchestra as much as possible as well. So it's not it's it's very different than a tiny little cabaret gig where you're telling stories and you're trying to really integrate. It's a mix of songs from shows that I've been in. It's a mix of songs of from shows, um, musicals that um, I love. Uh, we have like a, a bit of, we, we op we're opening the second act with a bit of a West Side Story suite, um, which is, which I think is just beautiful. I had a amazing experience in early December getting to go over to London. Uh, I was asked to be part of the, this big Rogers and Hammerstein 80th anniversary concert. And once again, with a incredible orchestra and um, yeah, that's, it's been a bit of a, a theme for me this year, which I didn't, necessarily expect so it's it's a, a couple things that really led me to may 11th which is a lot of fun um but yeah it's getting to sing and listen to those you know golden age classical music music theater songs was really really special and i got to sing a bunch uh, i got to sing two songs from south pacific and um, a bit of carousel and a bit of uh cinderella and uh and yeah actually some south pacific has made its way onto this set list and and then it also a fun thing that I was very excited that Chris was excited about. Uh, I've worked on this Apple, so I got to work on Apple's Schmigadoon, two seasons of that. And the first season especially really took these classical musical theater ideas and kind of turned them on their head a little bit. And um, and so we're gonna we're gonna touch on some on some Schmigadoon as well. So the first season I, I kind of played a version of Billy Bigelow. So we'll hear a little bit of a <laughs> of Schmigadoon's version of Carousel, which is very fun. And uh, and then a little bit of um, a song from season two, which is uh, a kind of a nod to Pippin as well. One song I'm singing for the first time is called The World We Knew, which was a, a Frank Sinatra song. It's It sounds very much like a James Bond song, which I think is so cool with an orchestra. I It's funny, I, ha I had originally had Skyfall on my list because I thought, and I was thinking about some James Bond songs because they sound so amazing as orchestral pieces. And Chris had suggested this song and he'd done a version, an arrangement for Josh Groban. So again, there's a lot of crossover because I'm playing Sweeney right now. Josh had just played Sweeney. And so there was a lot of very natural things that were kind of happening as we were chatting. And that song in particular is one that I've never sang before. And I'm very excited. And I can't wait to hear the orchestra. Yeah, right now I'm, I have three weeks left of Sweeney Todd and Broadway. Or I'm, I'm in my, so really two and a half weeks left. We finished two weeks from, uh, we finished on May 5th. So, so yeah, so I'm finishing up uh, on Sweeney on Broadway and then immediately flying out to LA a couple of days later. For this, I've always been much more interested in um, more complicated characters, and I like to tell people that kind of all I want to do is play Gary Oldman esque bad guys. <laughs> so, so Sweeney is really a big step for me in that direction, I think. And also, you know, I mean, I'm I just turned forty this year. It just feels like a big. It, it does feel like a, a transitional moment for me uh, with my with my um, on stage work or even on camera work. And I I was terrified for, about the challenge, but I relished the opportunity to kind of take my swing at this and um, it's gone really, really well. And I'm very, very proud and grateful that I've gotten to do it. Uh, after May 11th, I kind of have a bit of a clean slate for the first time in about five years. But that being said, uh, I'm doing three weeks at the Cafe Carlisle here in New York in June. And that's also my first time doing that and playing that room. And that'll be a very different show than this. It's, I think it's less than a hundred seats and it's like, I've seen shows there and, um, from friends that have, have done shows there, they say it's like performing in your living room. So very different than <laughs> what we're about to do. But I'm really so excited to be kind of making my, uh, I guess you would call it symphony or orchestra debut as a solo performer with uh, with you all. I'm just, I, I can't wait, I'm so excited. Yeah.